All right, guys, welcome to today's video. For those that are new here, we take a look at the latest gaming industry news, rumors, and leaks with a heavy focus, of course, on PlayStation. However, I do also take a sneak peek at Xbox and Nintendo if it's worth covering. Timestamps are available in the description along with the links to all of today's topics. So we're starting off with massive rumors coming out about more Xbox games going over to the PlayStation platform. I've mentioned this on previous videos before. Following the success of the four Xbox games which came to the PlayStation platform, Sadia Nadella came out and was like practically hammering home how successful those games were and how Microsoft intends to meet the players where they play or where they are as in release games on platforms where you play your games regardless of what the platform that you're on. Now we've got Jess Corden who like some insiders has his hits and misses with information and leaks about the gaming industry so obviously take this with a pinch of salt but it's not the first time we've heard these types of rumors from insiders or developers so Jess Corden of Windows 7 Central has weighed in on the topic of more Xbox games coming to PlayStation formats following the announcement of the Xbox Showcase for June the 9th in a response to an Xbox fan on Twitter or X about speculation that Gears of War and Forza Horizon are heading to the Sony platform. Corden simply replied, everything is going. The rumors are suggesting that all Xbox first party games are coming to PlayStation, including Forza, Halo and Gears. Xbox will be more Steam like in the future affordable prices, lots of sales, and more open for developers. Future Xbox hardware is going to be for fans who want it, so hardware will continue. However, it'll be very small, limited numbers for niche portion of the Xbox gamers who end up buying it. This isn't the first time we've heard about more than just the four previously announced games heading to PlayStation. Back in March, Chris Dring of GamesIndustry.biz, who was heavily criticized by bitter gamers, should we say, he claimed that publishers are not only losing interest in supporting Xbox, for their games, there are plans to bring the majority of Xbox titles over to rival formats. More recently, Microsoft revealed in the wake of the Xbox games dominating the PlayStation Store Top 25 that it is committed to meeting players where they are, suggesting it has no problems in bringing more games to the PlayStation platform. This is what I'm talking about right here. Looking at this whole situation, and of course you're going to say I'm biased because I'm, I've got a PlayStation-centric channel. Fair enough. But objectively looking at this, I own all consoles. Nintendo, I own multiple Xbox consoles and multiple PlayStation consoles. In theory, I don't really care where the games are. I'll just go and play them if the games are good. If the games pull me in, I will get that console if I haven't got it, or I will buy the game and play it on that platform. Although, admittedly, most of my games are PlayStation games because, in my opinion, PlayStation has much better single player games. In fact, single player games at PlayStation are unrivaled across the industry with some of the best first party studios and developers in the industry at Sony PlayStation. And single player games is what I mostly enjoy. So I'm quite naturally drawn to the PlayStation platform, but I used to play, love playing games like Halo and Gears back in the day. I just haven't really gone back onto that platform because it doesn't offer me anything else. But I look at this as someone from the outside of the Xbox ecosystem looking in, I'm constantly hearing and seeing that Xbox is doing really bad. Third party devs don't want to support it. Sales of hardware is shocking. The majority of Xbox gamers don't buy games. They wait for games to drop into Game Pass. I hear that the Xbox games are going to be releasing on every platform. You hear this all the time and then you start to see it. We're now seeing it. Almost all third party games which release on Xbox and PlayStation, the majority of the sales are on the PlayStation platform. I'm not even talking about a small marginal difference between sales. I'm talking massive disparity of sales between the two platforms. There is a cl it's clear evidence that a large proportion of the Xbox gamers do not buy the games. They've been conditioned not to buy games but rather rent them via Game Pass. I don't want to paint all Xbox gamers with the same brush. I, I recognize that there are some really passionate gamers who do support the sale of games and enjoy purchasing their games on Xbox. It's it's a good place to play if you enjoy playing there. But unfortunately, those gamers that do buy games on Xbox, unfortunately, you guys are the minority. The majority wait for games to drop into Game Pass and the numbers are reflective of this. Look, I'm not saying gamers on PlayStation don't wait for games to drop into PlayStation Plus. Of course they do. Of course they do. It would be ridiculous of me to suggest otherwise. However, they are few and far between in comparison to the Xbox platform. The sales numbers speak volumes. The numbers tell us that gamers who 
game on PlayStation by their games. This is why it has more third party support with games. This is why the PlayStation platform is still flying off the shelves. This is why the PS5 Pro is going to be shit hot and sold out everywhere. And this is why Microsoft wants its games on the PlayStation platform, plain and simple. Microsoft makes profit selling their games on the PlayStation platform. It's as clear as day, which is why I made previous video clearly stating that the four games coming to PlayStation will be a test case scenario. And the test has been passed. It's been proven to be highly successful for both PlayStation and Microsoft. And now Microsoft has proven their games will sell on rival platforms. So they're looking to release more. I'm really looking forward to the Xbox showcase on June the 9th because I want to know what else is coming to the PlayStation platform later this year or early next year. Let me know what games you're hoping for on the Xbox platform that you want to see on PlayStation's platform over the coming months and year ahead. Okay, let's move on. So there's an analyst firm called Sicana and there's a chap there, an analyst called Matt Piscatella. He's revealed that the PS5 was the market leader in North America for both unit and dollar sales during not only March, but the first quarter of the year as a whole. Again, re kind of re-emphasizing and reinforcing why the platform is brilliant. People just can't get enough of PlayStation. He took to Twitter and revealed that spending for the video game hardware in February 2024 dropped 32% in comparison to the same period last year, totaling $391 million. In addition, spending for PS5, Xbox, and Nintendo also fell a minimum of 30% year on year. The PS5 has been performing strongly in the US since stock became readily available in early 2023 and frequently comes out on top as the leading hardware performer each month. So prior to that, the console was plagued by heavy stock shortages, which we all knew because of the coronavirus pandemic following the system's launch in 2020 November. And like I mentioned in, earlier in the video, the PS5 stock is smoking hot right now and stock is just flying off the shelves. Great to see. It's really fantastic to see following the slow and difficult period during the COVID years. Okay, moving right along. Stellar Blade is having a stellar time of it, having made the top spot on the physical UK all format chart. Fantastic to see. The top 10 are as follows. Number one, Stellar Blade. Fabulous performance from Stellar Blade so far. Number two, Mario Kart 8. Coming in at number three was Top Spin 2K25. Hogwarts Legacy still hanging in there at number four. Super Mario Brothers, number five. And at number six, we have Minecraft with WWE at uh, number seven. Number eight, Princess Peach. And hanging in at number nine. I say hanging in, it's always there. Grand Theft Auto, again, top 10. It's been there for, the, for a decade. And at, in at number 10, we have Forza Motorsport. Stellar Blade's game director recently confirmed that the development team are working on a boss challenge mode, which would be great. And that'll be soon introduced into the game. More good news for those that are currently playing and enjoying Stellar Blade. Hopefully with the success of Stellar Blade, gamers are going to get to see a Stellar Blade 2 after Shift Up's next project, as the studio head did say that a sequel for Stellar Blade would only depend on the game's sales and performance. So it's doing absolutely fantastic. The game at the moment is booming. So I'd expect to see a Stellar Blade 2 in the near future. Maybe not yet because they are working on a new project, but after their current project, Stellar Blade 2. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments about today's topics. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.